Welcome to Scream Queens Season 1, Episode 4, Thoughts. This episode is called Haunted House. So, as usual, spoilers for all these, yeah, these first four episodes. And, yeah, yet again, an episode I absolutely love. So, let us dive right in. Yeah, you know, I, I think I laughed at every single joke. I'm going to hell. I really like that... You know, one of the things that Chanel number one likes, actually, was it the? F actually, it might be the thing. the The thing that she really likes about Halloween, it's her jam, is that it's the only day of the year where you're allowed to scare kids and people don't think you're a total psycho. That's that's the thing. You know, that's the like. The other 364 days, she's just walking around, checking her calendar, I just just a little bit longer, just 120 more days, and I get to scare those little shits again without people. Honestly, let's let's be completely honest, she probably does it some of the other days a year. She's just like, okay, fine, yeah, I'm a psycho, whatever. And calls it chanel and we see the... You know, just, she despises these, you know, young women that just idolize her. It's just, yeah, wow. And we see that the Dean is working closely with the police to cover up the, the, you know, yeah. And the Dean really thought this through. Like, she... You know, she makes a good point. She makes a, a pretty convincing case. But, wow, she really did, like, think through every single thing of how she would do the... Yeah. And, yeah, so so Grace and... We uh, Pete. Grace and Pete. Too many characters on the show. No. Grace and Pete go to the... the uh, what was her name? Mandy, I think. The only person who didn't change her name from the, 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 you know, yeah, she survived the, the, yeah, there were like, what were they, four or something, four girls, you know, 20 years prior in 1995, and, you know, she's the only one who didn't change her name, apparently, and, you know, the, the, Pete, and, and Grace are going as the, you know, the titular, uh, titular the, the couple from How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. And they do, yeah, they, they honestly, they look a lot like, you know, the, the, so, yeah. And Pete can't stop McConaughey, which, to be fair, it's a lot of fun. There's a there's a there's a box and you just gotta you gotta find the key. And when you unlock that box, then you'll know. And just yeah, it's uh, you know I I don't blame him, but maybe not the right time. You know, talking to the and and you know she she has a, a pet. Ah crap, I forget what it was, but it, it's one of those animals. That, you know, Grace points out not a lot of you don't see a lot of those anymore. You know. It's it's time for breakfast. We have meat today, and you know, like you're you're even in your head, you're like, oh, please don't, please don't, like, yep, yeah. It's it's a she presents roadkill that has been cooked, yeah, and yeah, the the you know we get another some more flashback to 1995. Have any of you heard of, you know, what was it, ne negligent homicide? You know, you could be arrested for, you know, for, for finding your, yeah, for, for hitting the, finding your groove. Just like Footloose. And the, the, you know, the maid offers up. You know, I could make sausages out of her. I could sell them at the farmer's market. I could feed them to the, you know. And the, yeah, we see the, the burial. I really like Dean Munch. Holy crap, she really did think of everything. Like, every single detail that just, yeah. And, you know, the the... 
Mandy explains, you know, yeah, the the you know one of one of the four committed suicide. One of them was never the same. One of them is doing really well at Fox News, actually, which. I believe that 100%. Like, I, if, if I did find out that one of the young female anchors on Fox, like, helped bury a body because she didn't bother taking care of, you know, a, a woman who just gave birth and would need some medical attention, yeah, honestly, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And we learn the, the baby was definitely a girl. Now listen here, Missy. I, I saw that baby real up close. I know my peas and carrots. And yeah, that does, you know, one, once again, we have to wonder, is Grace, the, it, and it, again, like, maybe it will turn out that way, but it's almost too obvious. Like, the first thing we learn about her is that she, her, you know her mother died? She does the only connect and and was a member of Cap Capital and this whole thing. But you know now she says, oh, you know, died when I was two years old, which would explain the the twenty. Yeah, yeah. Just let's see. Yeah, yeah. I guess that would mean that it was some other girl who took care of her for the first two years. Yeah, and uh, we see their jack o' lanterns, jack o' lanterns, and the the one of them made a a hurricane. That's so bad. And I like you know Zayde announces that she's going to you know she's she's gonna make this big like uh, what, what's it called. A fundraiser, you know, to, to, you know, and, and I forget who it was, but one of the, the girls says, but everyone who can vote for you is in this room right now. Why did, you know, why, why are you doing this? Why not just tell us? And, you know, Chanel really does not like this opposition and they make multiple Obama references, but, you know, she cowered, yes, I can into the the pumpkin and and Chanel is like you know I'm gonna lose for the, you know this is the first time in 150 years just because we're living in the age of Obama and the the you know and she she threatens her and then walks off and the other Chanel's find her sharpening a blade and then she's like waving the knife around is like oh please put that down you know you are really not making a very convincing case that you're not a killer right now and let's see I I really love when when Mandy is attacked like you know at first you get the the, the obvious you know there's a knock at the door but she does you know she brings out her bat and there's no one there you know and closes the door blocks the door and then there's like knocking and banging of every single possible kind. Like, you know, there's knocking at the door, and someone's like banging metal things together, and it sounds like someone's like tapping on a window. It's just like, it's just I love the satire of this show. It's just such, cause cause it, it, it yeah you know some it's yeah, and. And and you know the 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 red devil does get her and Chad Radwell is going around finding gravestones and he's gonna rub one out if he finds a particularly sexy gravestone and he explains you know and and apparently Hester feels the exact same way so again really uh, they could they could definitely be the killer at, at least one of them could easily be one of the killers and then he says ah you know there's just too few horrible things this generation that's why we're like this you know no awesome diseases and you know no no wars where you could go and see something horrible and it would scar you for the rest of your life because we keep pulling out and 
Hester specifically says that she wants everything that Chanel Number no. One has, and she's you know she strongly implied she's going to kill Zayde, and they're going you know and she and Chad will have sex in a scary place. And now the the movie that Wes is showing is one of the children of the corn movies, and he talks about you know something from your childhood, you know, just, yeah. He, like everyone else on this show, is really giving off a serial killer vibe. And apparently, Grace's mom died in a fire, and there's no, so there's nothing left, and the birth certificate is missing, and, and just, yeah, it really is. So, yeah, we have to wonder if she is the one. And and we have the amazing line, I saw you come out of your mother. Big mistake, by the way. That's so awful. Seriously, though, please, if, you're, if your significant other is pushing another person out of their person, least you could do is be present physically and emotionally that's that's literally bare minimum and yeah so they they meet at shady lane and we get three jump scares in a row which again just like because in so many horror movies in so many slasher movies it would be you know there would be the the at least one of these jump scares, and maybe maybe first a fake out jump scare, and then the killer shows up and attacks, you know, kind of thing. And here we have three jump scares in a row, and I mean, no one attacks, but any of these people could be the killer, you know. And I love the the <laughs> the the um, it's Denise and Pete both did you know research. And they're delivering that, you know, they're they're doing the, you know, I keep expecting them to say, Jinx, you owe me a Coke. But, you know, they're, they, they're delivering their lines at the exact same time. And right after, I didn't see you there, which library? And it turns out they went to two different libraries. Because, you know, yeah, it's, there's more than one library. This, it's, it makes a lot of sense, you know, if, if this just, yeah. So, but that was really, really funny. <laughs> And the, yeah, you know, they're going to make a haunted house in the haunted house. And it then becomes a third kind of haunted house before the episode is over, which is just amazing. And I love it. And I, I, I cannot get enough of this show. And I love that, like, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're like, Zayde is at one end of this like long you know long room and Denise is at the other and Denise is like can I talk to you and you know they steps up and suddenly D Denise is right in front of her it's like I and I th I don't think they actually cut so they must have done that thing like in one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies where in reality like Robert Englund was really close to the camera and then they had someone who looked like him at a distance so they could do yeah seriously appreciate that that reference that's yeah <clears throat> that that still really works like if you haven't watched I suppose I shouldn't say which one but if you haven't watched that particular Nightmare on Elm Street movie in a while treat yourself to it it's it's yeah it really really holds up and both Denise and Zayde are convinced that the other person is the killer turns out that Denise didn't get into Kappa Kappa Tau, uh, you know, and that was in, in, in 1988. And, you know, there's the very implied bit of racism, you know, you wouldn't like it here. That's, like, if a white person, hypothetically, if you do find yourself in a situation where you as a white person are talking to a black person, and you legitimately feel like, no, that, that black person legitimately would not like it here, Try to find some other words because you're gonna come off as super racist if you don't. Those exact words in those exact order, like, yeah, don't, don't do that. And the the we have the um, 
you know, it was mentioned earlier, in an earlier episode, the, the Chanel's do legitimately eat cotton, and it's like, won't that kill us? No, 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 not if you do it like this. You know, they, they brought sauce to dip the, the cotton balls in, and, you know, and <laughs> Chanel number one is like, I may die at the stabbing end of a serial killer's blade, but I will not die hungry. And they get they're they're gonna go for for pizza, and you know one of the one of the frat bros, you know wolf whistle at them, and one of the others is like backing him up, and you know the 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 girls call out you know what what next are you gonna call me sweetheart are you gonna you know what was the other line. Yeah, you know, some, something. And then he's like, yeah, that's my signature move. <laughs> he's so clueless, he doesn't even get that he's like, you know, so you're going to do this ho horrible thing. You bet I am. Who's got two thumbs and is going to do that horrible thing? This guy, you know, just, he's that freaking clueless. Just, and, you know... And Hester's like, this is my signature moment, you know, and kicks him in the crotch, and just, like, all of the Chanel's come together in interest of just demolishing the, the, yeah, these, these frat boys, that was really, really funny, and, you know, everyone in the, in the, what are the, what do they call those in college? Lunch, lunch hall, you know, all of them cheer. Oh, right, I, I totally, you know, I also really loved when each of the Chanel's explain, you know, Chanel number one is like, after all, isn't that the real reason to be in a sorority? And like, Billy Lord is like, I, you know, my identity is purely external. If I wasn't Kappa Kappa Tau, I don't know what, you know, I, I wouldn't know who I was. And... You know, Abigail Breslin is like, I appear to, you know, the, the way that I gesticulate and talk seems to be off-putting to all boys and girls and everyone. But if I, as long as I'm Cap Capital, no one seems to mind. And Hester, I joined for the exact same reason you joined. I, I don't, did she call her mommy in this scene? I, I don't think so, but... You know, it's creepy enough just to, to, yeah, wow. And, let's see. Right, and yeah, this is the episode where the Chanel the talking to the, um, what was her name? I'll, I'll have it momentarily. The, um... Uh, there we go, and because her character is gonna be right around, huh? Uh, okay, I will open the episode itself to see episode, episode four, haunted house, and. The character, right, the character of Jennifer, played by Breezy Eslin, now So the let's see. Uh, I'm oh right. The the um, she was. That's right. The the um, the character wasn't even intentionally trying to pledge Kappa Kappa Tau before Dean Munch 
um, encouraged her. Um, see, I'm not entirely sure if the um, I Yeah, the the um, I'm not really seeing the any indication of if she is um Yeah, I, I can't really tell if the actress is actually on the spectrum. Uh, I mean, certainly I know some actors are. There are people on the spectrum who also act. So, yeah, I, I don't know, you, you know, the... the um, But the, the, um, I know people, I, I've known Aspies who would really enjoy that joke, so, you know, but obviously it is, yeah, it's super offensive. I'm not making excuses for it. And the, right, the, the someone texted Hester and Chad and you know neither of the you know yeah neither of them are are sufficiently put off by by that fact they're just you know eh, mysterious and they they go into the the room and you know we we're we're at the part of a slasher movie where someone has you know someone's going to find all the dead bodies and they did let's see i feel like was there Maybe at least one miss. Oh wait, I guess they didn't have access to the body of Death Taylor Swift, right? Because the police have that body. Yeah, and I think everybody else was actually there. So yeah, this does confirm no legit like. <laughs> despite what Chanel number one keeps as insisting must be the case. The maid is, in fact, not one of the killers. That is, and and again, just great. You know, I appreciate they went to the effort of setting up the the leg so that a finger could poke through and some some yellow nasty ooze you know stuff could ooze out and just you know again practical effects and again this nasty disgusting gnarly you know. Yeah, really, really appreciate. There weren't really any on-screen deaths in this episode that were that, but finding dead bodies and sticking a finger into one and having just yeah, that was absolutely loved it. That's yeah. And <laughs> and Chad goes into the cafeteria and is or yeah, whatever it's called, and it's like nobody check out the dead body. There are real live dead bodies in the haunted house and of course everyone goes to check it out and then the the Zayde you know realizes that cuz cuz she's like I didn't set up any dead bodies and you know finds them and tries to get get people to stop you know looking and taking pictures and everything and then the you know she calls and she does actually get nine one one, and the, the and it's apparently like a young detect you know c cop who's manning the phone, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna check that out as soon as I get you know as as soon as I'm able to, you know as as soon as my shift ends you know which, you know, I appreciate that he's not actually gonna abandon his post to to go to this you know and, ma'am, you are at an awesome haunted house. 
This is not a, you know, a matter for the police. And I would like you to know that, you know, what was it? False, yeah, false calls to the, and, and 911 calls, you know, cost taxpayers thousands of dollars every year. And she's like, that's actually a really good point. I'm going to try to change that when I'm president. And just, yeah. And, yeah, we, we find out that whoever the hag was, was apparently taking care of the baby in 95. That, or she was very kinky. And, you know, I, I like the thing. There were still milkmen in 95? Focus! You know, that's... Uh, Pete, not great at the focusing thing. He gets, he gets way too into the wrong details. And turns out Gigi was the mom that, you know, the, the hag. And, yeah, really, again, they're doing such a great job just slowly, gradually, you know, drip-feeding information for the mystery. And just, yeah, it's, it, you know, the, the various... You know, yeah, the, the way that everyone is a potential suspect. Great stuff. So, yeah, uh, next episode, we'll, I will cover next week, probably next Thursday. I'm going to do at least one, maybe two more videos this week. So, I hope to catch you then. And until then, keep screaming.